Good evening. Uh, welcome to our uh, June monthly chapter dinner, as well as our member appreciation evening. Uh, usually that occurs uh, at our November meeting, but we wanted to take this opportunity as this uh, hopefully it won't be our last dinner at Normandy Farm, but under this great ownership and management group that we've had since our chapter's inception in 2004, we wanted to send them off in style with a packed dining room. So uh, Mr. Edry, our chapter president, will be uh, having a ceremony at the end of the evening, but if we want to give our wait staff owner in the back of the house a round of applause so they can hear it. Uh, just as uh, schools over the next week or two go on summer vacation, our chapter will be as well. So we'll be on a hiatus for in-person events for the months of July and August. Uh, we hope to have a location for our September dinner. So that first Wednesday in September after the Labor Day holiday uh, communicated via our newsletter and stay tuned for some virtual lunch and learn so you still have PDU opportunities during the summer. Uh, our chapter leadership at the registration table, we'll give them a round of applause. Uh, they were doing some recruiting for two uh, board member vacancies for uh, uh, Kobe programs to help Dr. Chen get great speakers like Ms. Henderson, as well as uh, help for uh, VP of communication and VP of education. So we look forward to following up with some interested parties and hopefully for our September meeting, we'll have this filled up. And with the pandemic, uh, we had outgoing board members over the past two years that we didn't get to properly thank. So we have four of them here. So if they could stand up, uh, Ms. Ruby Bradley Kane. Uh, Mr. Jake Leffin, Dr. Raj Basada, and Ms. Maggie Robbins. So, uh, our all volunteer workforce, every contribution is needed and counts and helps set up great events like this. So, we appreciate your service and hope to have you back on the board in the future. Okay, uh, Ms. Henderson's currently one uh, on the project management, continuing education development staff for Montgomery College. Uh, they were 2019 Education Partner of the Year. We've had three education days at Globe Hall in the past and hope to be there again in the future for some in-person symposiums. Uh, and they have a great new training opportunity through their partnership with the Disney Institute uh, later this month, uh, it's Disney's approach to business excellence. So if you wonder how Disney is able to pull off Star Wars and Marvel and all their Disney content uh, in the efficient manner they do, uh, this training could be for you for just being curious and it's a good opportunity to get seven PDUs. Uh, there is a small cost, but if your company has a training education allowance for the year, this is a great way to uh, use it and have a Friday playing hooky from the office, virtual or uh, brick and mortar office. So uh, stay tuned for more on this on our newsletter. And we have flyers up front as you exit if you're interested. Uh, Montgomery College is just one of our education partners who are doing great things. Uh, Mr. Giuliani from Project Management Experts was our presenter last month. 
Uh, he has a wide variety catalog of in-person and virtual events, as well as our friends, Lisa and David, who moved to Delaware, but they're still offering great virtual offerings, as well as coming back to the great state of Maryland from time to time. Okay, uh, fast forward to the beginning of the pandemic, we didn't quite know what a virtual presentation was. Everybody goes to projectmanagement.com and clicks play on an hour webinar and walks away and comes back to see if it's checked yet. But most of those were monotone voices in the background and you're just clicking through slides. Uh, in uh, May of, in June of 2020, uh, we had a great opportunity through uh, Ruby to get Ms. Sylvia Henderson as our virtual speaker. And she really set the bar for what an engaging virtual presentation can be. She didn't sit down the whole time. She was up, she was dancing, she had music in the background. And that's stayed with us for two years. So we're happy to have her back at near the two year, or the two year anniversary of your last talk. And uh, we're looking forward to just as engaging of a presentation, even in a hot room with 120 of your closest friends, so. Uh, she's one of the DC area's top thought leaders, consultant, coach, facilitation guides. Uh, her company, Mind Team Solutions, is doing great things and would be a great asset to work with your uh, companies, be it public or private sector. She hosts her own TV talk show on uh, cable, Think About It, and she'll leave you some things to think about, as well as just, we've had some great National Speakers Association speakers in the past couple of years, and they've really funneled uh, some great uh, enlightenment to us. Uh, they're speaking for free, they're waiving their speaking fees uh, for the benefit of you as the members. So we look forward to continuing that relationship. Uh, she's multi-published with many feature articles as well as books and her latest effort. Uh, hey, that's my idea. She'll be signing and selling copies at the end. and. We'll have a trivia game at the end to give away uh, two signed copies. So we're very honored to have Ms. Henderson here. Uh, we did have uh, one person who was looking for a job and one person who had a job. If you guys could stand up. <laughs> okay. Okay, uh, if you just wanna give a quick uh, 20 second elevator speech. And if you have any opportunities at your company, if you want to hang around and come up front, uh, ma'am.
uh, we will have an exercise today. So your table is your group for virtual attendees. We'll put you in a breakout session and we'll be passing out the handout. And it's our honor to introduce Ms. Henderson to the Montgomery County stage. When I was at IBM way back in the day, I didn't know there was a title called project management. So when I studied what you do, I thought, well, I just, I was a team lead and People had ideas and we made those ideas happen. I didn't know, you know, we had processes and procedures and key performance indicators and milestones and all of that. And again, I didn't know that was project management. So I'm impressed that there's a title, that there's training. I thought, gee, I didn't get all that back then in the day. So uh, it's been, it's interesting to be standing here and addressing those of you who are like professionals in the project management space. My question for you, other than for the food is, why are you here tonight? Why are you here tonight? Free, <laughs> free drinks, oh no, that's not a free drink, you paid for that. And I kind of thought, so why me? Yeah, I, I addressed you a couple of years ago. There was more of a formal keynote speech. Well, I want to dispel the notion that you're here to listen to me speak tonight or listen to a speech tonight. I want to encourage your discoveries. See, there's like 150 of you in here, but I'm gonna get you all talking to each other. So there's gonna be a major buzz coming up from here shortly. If you're here for answers, I might have some. But I am a facilitative speaker. I like asking questions. I like hearing discussion. I like learning from others who are experts. They say, if you are the smartest person in the room, you need to find a new room. Okay. So I enjoy having a challenging group of experts. I value your thoughts. I value your experiences, your expertise your concerns, your fears, uh, and your plans. I was told this is your end of program year program. And so it's time to celebrate. It's time to solidify the connections you're making at your tables. And hopefully that you're making online with, when you get into your breakout groups. You've had a lot of information over the year. You've had a lot of information, a lot of ideas. I've watched some of your past videos. I know some of your speakers because my professional organization is NSA, not it's the other NSA, National Speakers Association, DC chapter. So we do the same thing. We have chapter meetings monthly. We hear wonderful speakers who up our game. We get tons of ideas but do we implement all of them? So one of the things I wanna take care of today for you is you've got tons of ideas from all kinds of speakers and experts up here. I wanna help you make those ideas a reality as part of my program today. Part of the program, and you'll see this later on the, on the sheet, is to give you a process that I follow for myself that I have my clients follow, and that I used to have my employees follow to turn ideas that were in their heads and in their hearts into implementation and reality. And it's a process and a system. And I know as project managers, you like processes and systems. So that's what I'm gonna give you. In the few months of your break, in the next couple of months, you have some things to do. You have to look at what I call H2. Second half of 2022. Can you believe it's June 1st already? 
you're going to have to figure out how to get things done in the second half of the year. So I want to address the first part of the program description for today's program. And that description included, we're going to look at how do you earn followers as leaders? If you are solo or you're alone in your, in, well, mainly solo business, you're a leader of one. So how in the world do you have the, the chops to be a leader of many when you're a leader of one? I was a solo business owner back in the day before I started Mind Team Solutions with a partner. And I became president of a couple of different organizations and it was like, so, how can I be leading when I just have a solo practice? And that was part of the advice I got is lead groups, lead in your volunteer role. So if you're solo and on your own as a business owner and you need to lead and get leadership practice, volunteer, fill in those two spots that were you and you on the board there and get some leadership practice so that people respect you as a leader when you're about to lead a project. A couple of the tips I'll have for how to be a leader of one. Some of you are leaders without titles. You don't have a manager title. You don't have a supervisor's title. You are, quote, just contractors. I'm a contractor now, so I get that. And so there are some things that you need to do to establish yourself when you don't have a leadership title but you're still leading. I'll talk a little bit about that briefly. And then how do we do all this in the fluid workspace? The, I say workspace because, well, I define workspace as any location. And that's where we are now. We're working in any location, whether it's your home, whether it's at Starbucks or Panera, whether it's at a co-working space or in a centralized office or on a plane flying internationally, those are all workspaces now. And that's a term, I didn't coin the term. I got that term from reading many an article lately about define a workplace. And it's sort of hard to define anymore. It's more workspace. So how do we manage our businesses? How do we manage projects in a fluid workspace? I'm gonna cover that briefly. And actually tackling that question, that's what I want to hit first. You've got those questions. How do we manage in a fluid workspace? I don't have the answers, but a lot of people do. The link that is on your handout, the link that's on the screen, if you want to you know, use your phone and take a picture of it, go right ahead. Uh, that link is the link to a research report, Pew report. Uh, it's called COVID-19 Pandemic Continues to Reshape Work in America. Let me say a few words about that. That was an interesting report to me. Now, I do, and here's part of my advice for managing in a fluid workspace, leading in a fluid workspace, it's to constantly research. I mean, I, that report is so different from what I've read in the Wall Street Journal in 2021, let alone 2020, because... The workspace has changed. You, you know that, you've heard that, but it is changing daily. Six months ago, a year ago, people did not want to come back to the workplace because they were worried about disease. They were worried about the, their health and safety. Now, according to the Pew Report and what I read constantly in the Wall Street Journal, people don't want to come back to work now in the centralized workplace because the commute, they like, okay, we didn't deal with this for two years. I don't want to go back to that. They don't want to come back to the workplace because they've created a system at home and they have focus at home. Some people do have a focus at home and they found the work-life balance, so to speak, working from home or working from a local workplace, workspace. Other people want to get back to work because they've been working from home and they couldn't focus, especially when you think you had children 
or elder care and it, those kinds of interruptions, they couldn't focus. So they're loving getting back to a workplace to get away from all of that or to make that separation of work versus home. Because when I was working in a work in an office, it was easier to shut the door, get on that elevator, and after the commute here in Washington, DC, I used to work downtown at 18th and K, get home and you're in a different environment. So that's, you know, other people want to go to the workplace and you're dealing with all semblance of in-between. And that changes, it's gonna keep changing daily. The more companies want people back, the more companies let people stay away, the more people have moved to places and don't wanna come back. So that report covers all of that. I am not the, my expertise in that area is that I research, when I talk to potential clients and clients, I just ask questions. And that's kind of my advice for how you manage, how you lead in a fluid workspace is to ask questions. Stay current. And I mean, month after month, stay current. Not, oh yeah, I have a report from 2020 about COVID, work, COVID in the workplace. That is, doesn't work anymore. No longer relevant. Network with your colleagues. My goodness. You know, find, so what are you doing in the company? So what are you doing as a project manager? So how are you leading a team that's remotely located or located all over the world? Stay in touch and collaborate, network with your colleagues. Ask your clients, I already said, what they need and want. We do a lot of asking in my company. Serving your clients, you want to be flexible. Be flexible with your offerings. Find areas when you hear a client say, we're struggling with this, or you're seeing a project going down the hill and you say, mm, there could be a way to salvage this in a creative way. Stay flexible in order to serve your clients, your client. If you're in your own business, which I am, start thinking about multiple streams of income, multiple ways to serve. Yes, I can run meetings, but yes, I can also facilitate, say, the leadership team. Is there coaching involved? Can you help somebody manage their practice or their company in a different way? Can you just serve as an advisor? Can you offer a package of something, tools that you use that you can then package together and serve your customer? Just have multiple streams of income. Because if you're just one offering, that may not cut it six months from now. So that's for those of you who have your own business, a way to stay, stay relevant. When I started, I did a lot of speaking on stage way back in the day. I call it back in the day from you know, 2019. We also had clients all over the country. So I was on Zoom for seven years. And I was on Zoom before most people knew how to spell Zoom. In terms of staying flexible, though, in the last two years, a lot of our clients or potential clients were saying, because I'm in the organizational development field, leadership development, organizational development. And they were saying, you know, all that leadership development's great. But right now, we just need to, like, survive. We just need to have our employees just come back to work or figure out how they're going to work. And we had to shift and they were saying, you know, there's this thing called Zoom and we never heard of it and I don't know how to work it and how do we get our employees? And so we became Zoom experts even more. And our service was to help people figure out how to use this new tool for them to survive in their business. So that's what I mean by opening your eyes and finding out what you might be able to do to help them that's flexible, that you didn't even think of doing before. And that's how we survived as a business, finding out new services. So all of my advice, download the report from this website. Uh, it works, I just checked it this morning. And do some reading. It's really interesting reading in terms of what's, what, are, what are clients facing today. And you may be saying, yep, we're facing that yourself. Not just the Pew Report, find other reliable sources, Harvard Business Review, um, PMI, the, web, the national website, uh, uh, SHRM, 
ATD, the training, any of those that you might belong to or be able to access, they all touch on leadership in a fluid workspace. So then the other areas that I mentioned, leading on your own, earning followers. So here's the activity. Here's where I'm gonna stop talking and have you do some talking amongst yourself. I expect the noise level to go way up. Uh, those of you in breakout rooms don't have to worry about noise levels going way up. You just have to figure out who's gonna talk first, second, and third. So your assignment, your mission, should you decide to accept it, I think, no, that's Top Gun that's here. I, I was thinking Mission Impossible just aired or just premiered, but that's the other Tom Cruise movie, Top Gun. Your mission is if you, <laughs> we're going to try the technological version. This link, actually get rid of the HTTPS. I couldn't get in that way. If you can on your phone, get to that link bit.ly activity responses are one, you'll come up with hopefully a Google form that lets you input your answers. Now by being, by managing projects, I have a plan B for you. If you can't get in, and that's for everybody online also, if you can't get in, I have the questions on the handout you just got. So what I wanted to make easier was your input to these answers. This is a table discussion or a breakout group discussion. The question on the handout about halfway down is, how do you handle, share with your group, share with your table group, how you handle or what guidance can you give your colleagues, your peers at the table? What can you give for guidance in terms of leading projects? As a contractor or employee without having a leadership title, that's one of the questions that you can enter in the form. If you can get to the form, don't stress yourself if you can't get to the form. That's why I have plan B. The other quest, second question to answer at the table or talk about at the table is how do you lead yourself? What, how, how do you self-leadership in order to keep moving and to keep going in your business or in your job? What are some of the things you do to lead yourself? The third question, what are some positive ways to lead so that others willingly and respectfully follow you and trust you as a leader? Because as leaders, we need to earn our followers, especially if we don't have a title. We need to earn our followers. And so if you may not get through all four of these questions because I have to look at timing also for the program, but I would like you to try to at least work on at least two of these questions. And if you wanna write on the back of the handout, fine, and take a picture and send it to me, that would be great. 10 minutes for the activity, oh, that, that's fine. Yeah, there'll be a nice loud noise level. Or if you wanna input it into the Google form and just ship it to me, I will try if I get your responses. I No, try, try not, do. It's like Yoda said, I will have your responses compiled and I'll send them to Matt or Scott or somebody to make sure that all of you get all of your own responses. So you need to write them down or input them in the Google form or you won't get anything. So pick whoever's gonna do the writing at the table or the typing on your phone, if you can get to the form and I'm gonna set you free and stop talking for 10 minutes, breakout groups, you've got, what did you set them for? About eight minutes or so till they pop back out uh, to have a conversation about one, two or three of these questions. That's your mission, have at it. come back to you. If you can hear my voice, clap once. If you can hear my voice, clap twice. If you can hear my voice, clap three times. Thank you. Thank you. No. Oh, all right. Well, with all of you here, if you can, if you don't mind, if you got online, just hit send. I will not. I don't think I said it to catch your email. Do not worry. 
I will not uh, you know, send you emails. I'm just gonna have my virtual assistant compile all of the responses and get the responses back so that you all see. And if you did it in writing, catch a photograph with your phone, if you don't mind, of what you wrote. And I think I put my email in, my emails on the, uh, yeah, so just send it to me. I will, we will get all that compiled and get some good responses from you. I have a couple of tips for each of those questions that I'll share right now, just so that this gets onto the recording because you'll be able to come back to the recording and see this. So for leading projects without holding a leadership title, some of the tips I had are to share your expertise with the team without bragging, share your expertise. Sometimes they're looking at you like, so what, what do they have business leading us for? Um, ask the contract manager to introduce you with your credentials. That's not bragging. That's just introducing you, <laughs> uh, sharing who you are. Learn to understand the politics of the organization. This is huge so that you can manage your place within the organization. It's tough to be the outsider, but having to lead a project or lead a program. So understand the, poli learn the politics of the organization. Get clear in writing in the contract, if you can, uh, about reporting hierarchy and when issues arise, what do you do? Where do you go? Who do you report to, to, to work through those issues? Because you don't have employee, employer responsibility when you're a contractor. And just earn the team's trust and earn their confidence. Have small wins at first, if you're just coming in to lead a program or a project as an outsider. Uh, have small wins and that helps to build other people's confidence. So just some of my tips for that, leading without a title. Self-leadership. Every one of us needs to have, needs to practice self-leadership in one way or another. And I have two words for self-leadership. Emotional intelligence. That includes being self-aware. Know your strengths. Know your triggers. And help know your boundaries. Then it's self-manage. Manage those three appropriately. Manage your triggers, manage your boundaries, being firm with your boundaries. And yes, you can do that with clients. Manage your boundaries and manage your strengths. You know, utilize your strengths. That's self-management. Other aware, the third quadrant of, of emotional intelligence, and yes, I'm simplifying this for those of you who study emotional intelligence. Uh, other aware is to me the third quadrant, and that's observing. That's listening. That's, that's asking questions and seeking to understand the other person, understand their triggers, understand their strengths, and understand their boundaries. And we've had a lot of, we haven't had a lot of practice with that the last two and a half years of being remote. So that's really understanding and being aware of others. And then the fourth area of, of uh, emotional intelligence is relationship management. Keep in mind, you cannot control other people. All you can do is manage your role and in your interaction with others. So that to me is the essence of self-leadership is emotional intelligence getting good at those four quadrants. To earn followers, a couple of tips. Something that I had to learn, especially, especially with all the things happening nowadays, empathy is not necessarily sympathy. So empathy is letting other people know that they've been heard, because that's what we want to know. That's what we want to know we've been heard and the people you interact with want to know that they've been heard. That's empathy. That's, I hear you. That's, I get that uh, in terms of a comment, but also letting them know what, what you expect of them considering their situation. They've had, yeah, you know, they have a severe personal situation. You hear them, you get that. And these are the things that need to take place or these are the expected outcomes of our project. How can we work now? How can you make this happen with all this going on in your life? That's the real nutshell, that's empathy. Sympathy is going down the rabbit hole of feeling is what I call it. 
sympathy is, oh, I'm so sorry. What happened with that? And you're going down a rabbit. Oh my goodness. Well, that that I'm exaggerating somewhat, but that's to me sympathy. And if we're leading projects, we have to kind of watch sympathy. I don't mean be unfeeling, but there's a job to do. So let them know that they've been heard. Um, and here's the expectations for what has to be done. That's one way for earning followers. Sounds a little tough sometimes. Another tip, do, do what you're asking others to do or let them know you've done it. And that way you're not just having somebody do something that you would never do. So do what you do what you ask of others to do. Um, delegate, coach, challenge, uplift and praise. Those are all words that I like using for earning followers and being fair and equitable. And that's the key, being fair and equitable. So uh, for make sure people have the tools they need to perform and produce, making sure that you give counsel equitably, making sure that you have performance evaluations and performance standards that are equitable, um, that your expectations, the opportunities that you have can offer in the, pro in the project are equitable. If people see that you're fair, they tend to, you tend to earn their followership. If they sense that you're not fair, that you play favoritism, that's when followers, that's when you lose that. And then in the hybrid workplace, just over communicate. Over communicates as, as situations change. And I already covered the fluid workplace and workspace before. So those are really my tips for those four areas that uh, to address in that word cloud. I'll give you some Q and A time in a few minutes. Let me get through the rest of this. And then when I'm finished, if there's time, I think take some questions. So now the transition to, at this point, you've got even more ideas today from your colleagues. What do you do with all those ideas? from this program, from all the programs you, you were in before and you participated in here before. And remember earlier, I said I was gonna share with you a process that I follow to get ideas from head and heart, heart to actually implementation. That's what I'm gonna move into. As that transition, let me ask you, why in the world would you want ideas to become a reality? Not a rhetorical question this time. Shout out to why would you want to get ideas implemented to solve a problem, change something, make employees feel vested, inspire, create new opportunities, achieve goals and objectives. You can see the heads versus the hearts here in the room. <laughs> One more. Anybody uh, in chat share, why would you want your ideas implemented? To feel, good. to feel good. Innovate. The essence of every one of your answers, I saw your hands, but I was, the essence of every one of your answers is you want to make an impact, whether it's make money or save the world or make an impact on your community, on your family, whatever, it's to make an impact. So yes, what I called my process, the impact process. Just like every speaker, they have this acronym that they use to share the things that they want you to remember. So impact is my word. This is a six stage process. I say stage as opposed to steps because steps imply linearity. Do this, then do this, then do this, then do this. No, the impact process that I, compiled, because none of this is new stuff. You've probably seen this flow in other ways. Uh, I just went poof and lost my train of thought. Yes, uh, <laughs> that's right, thank you. <laughs> it's not linear, it's there's stages. So things can be done simultaneously and some actions need to be taken linearly, but most of this, these are stages. So you can be in one, in two stages at the same time. It'll be clearer in a couple of minutes. <laughs> Thank you. I'm 
Yes, as I get, I'm a boomer, as I get older, it just goes, oh. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> so like I said, you probably know something of this kind of a process in your project management experience. You may call it something else. I'm gonna fly through the process and you've got this, you've got the compilation on your, on your handout. This process is agnostic of tools, of software. You can adopt it to whatever works for you. So the impact process, six stages, helps you move projects forward, move ideas forward, and get things done. That's the part that, I, that I'm passionate about. Ideas are great, but man, they mean nothing until you get something done. These are little ideas, big ideas. So when you come out of these programs, my challenge to you, because I have to do this in my NSADC chapter programs, is pick the one or two ideas that you can bet you say, mm, I can do that. I can do that in the next month. I can start that in the next month. Or that sounds like something I really can put into place when I really work on this. Pick the one or two ideas from a program and then follow a process to get them implemented. So that process is, rumble, please, the first step, the first stage is ideation. It's getting ideas out. Get all of those thoughts out, however way you want to get them out. This is these six stages I spend a four hour workshop on. So we're just skimming a surface. It's ideation, it's getting ideas out, whether it's getting them down in a journal, on a whiteboard with post-it notes all on your phone. I use Evernote when I use, and I'm not promoting that product. You know, Microsoft has its own product, but a way that I can capture all kinds of ideas in all kinds of forms and access those ideas wherever I am. It's what we call divergent thinking. It's just getting stuff out of your head to free up those molecules so that you have space for new thoughts. That was scientific. When you're writing, the first stage of your writing is usually a brain dump. That's the ideation stage. Um, you see the picture I have, I do it, uh, I have a little idea journal that comes, that I give with part of my book. And there's a download link actually also on the, on the handout for an idea journal. It's just a way at the very bottom of the handout, I see people looking at it. That's just, I create, I know people think different ways. And so all I did for an idea journal is to create pages that have different formats. Some are blank pages. Some, are, some, some of you can work from a blank page. Some are literally check boxes because some of you need to have, oh, okay, I got this idea and I got this idea. Some of you like to filter into mind maps. So I have a couple of pages that look like mind maps. That's all the idea journal is. So that is a way for you to capture your ideas. But if you have other ways, fine. So it's get them out stage one, then start to get some organization to all those ideas, all those thoughts. And that's the convergent thinking, that's the editor's mind. So when you've done that brain dump for the first writing, now it's time to start editing, start getting those unnecessary words out, start fixing your, your, um, your English start and grammar. That's what, the, that's, that's what you do once you have all those thoughts out on my vision is on post-it notes because I use post-it notes and whiteboards like crazy. And so that's the, okay, hmm, these three ideas or these three tasks or whatever term you want to use, they fit under this category. And, you know, these two tasks, they can, I can move these here so that you're basically mapping out the process. And there's all kinds of ways to organize your thoughts. Those are just some of the ways. You know, problem to solution, whole part whole. Uh, is something logistical? Is there a process that you go step one, step two, step three? Whatever your idea you're working on, you want to get those ideas into some form of organization in order to then plan your strategy for how to implement them. This is the stage that all of my creative clients go, oh, timeline oh milestones oh commitments it's like yeah it has to be done if you're going to make something happen you need the you need to plan your strategy for implementing your idea 
whether it's a little simple idea like the party next week, you still have to plan your strategy. You still have to figure out what you have to buy, who's going to bring what, where they're going to sit, all that. And if it's a major project, obviously this is a bigger thing, a bigger, a bigger enterprise, but you're doing the same thing. You're plotting your strategy once you figure out what all do we need to take care of and do. That's, that's the process. Once you've got that strategy planned out, it becomes, it becomes the calendar. We're ruled by our daily calendar. We're ruled by our weekly calendar. But the only way to have that to go week by week by week is to have your calendar mapped out based on the plan. Work the plan. Whether the plan to work, work the plan. And then the other stages, and there's pieces for each stage, but I'm just summarizing. It's taking action. Just doing it. It's doing it. Plan, do, review. That's something that stays echoed in my head and has stayed there for years. Plan, do, review. And it's a circle uh, or, you know, do something, carry out some of your implementation, assess where you are, evaluate it, and then re-strategize. Because the essence of this is once you take action and you communicate and you evaluate where you are, you end up back to the idea stage because you find out, oops, that didn't work well. So what do we do to fix it? And then how do we organize those thoughts? And then how do we put that into our plan? So it's a circle in terms of a stage, uh, stages. So that's the impact process that I challenge you, invite you to practice and do. Detail, I go through step by step with examples, chapter by chapter in my book. That's the purpose. Hey, that's my idea. Well, how do you get it implemented? Yeah. So you're not a leader at the sponsorship level to implement the strategy. What are your recommendations to get that sponsorship by uh, based on this uh, timing? Question. I hope I, I say it right. If you're not the leader or the sponsor of the project, what do you do to get buy-in to the plan, the strategy to actually implement it? <laughs> that to me is the messaging stage. That to me is, the, is doing the Shark Tank version for your project. It's pitching your project. It's pitching it with the right message, with the right people uh, who, who do have the nod the head approval. I mean, that's a simplified answer, but that, that's how I've managed to get things implement it that I've created the strat or the team has created the strategy and but then someone else needs to sign off on it it's how do you pitch it it's communicate 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 it's speak the language of the approvers we were talking at our table about it's great to be technical and have all that detail about what your project is but if management who's going to sign off on it doesn't understand what in the heck you're talking about or what you're trying to implement, this is especially for IT and technical projects, they're not going to sign off. But they're going to so, and I encountered that at IBM. I encountered that at, yeah, I worked for AOL, America Online, way back in the day too. And that was a lot of technical stuff that had to be pitched to management that didn't understand the technology. Did that answer partially the question? Okay. So as we come to a close in the impact process, this is the, yeah, you may have, okay. Oh, whoa, okay, PowerPoint sure would blew up on that one. Uh, <laughs> so you, you have a nicely formatted chart at the bottom of your handout that summarizes all six stages. And the essence of this, or the, what I wanna leave you with is, ideas are great, but the people who implement them are you, and you are priceless. Thank you for having me, and there's the book. <laughs> trivia. Oh, yeah, trivia question. So at the, hmm, oh, shucks. Um, do folks online have a chance to do this too, or no? No, they don't have a chance to do this. At the minute, at when you've got all the ideas out and now you have to organize them, what kind of thinking is that called? You've done the ideas are all out there. 
Ah, convergent. I, I have no idea who answered first. It is the manipulate stage, but it convergent thinking is what the, the question. Yep. Yep, because there was divergent and then the convergent brings it back in. Good, good, good. I don't know. Ooh, I'm struggling. What's so? <laughs> So why do you want to get your ideas out? What's the system called? <laughs> How do you figure out who answered that? I have no idea. I heard it from over there somewhere in that. <laughs> don't you wish all quizzes, the P, don't you? Oh, I thought I heard it in the middle there, but that's okay. Yes. <laughs> well, thanks. Yep, that was, um, any comments, questions? I mean, this sounds like, it's not rocket science. It's a process that you probably follow in some stage or another, some way or another to get things done. Comments, questions? All right, we got a quiet group here. I want a box for my chocolate cake, by the way. <laughs> Thanks, a round of applause for Ms. Energy. I, I had a chance to be at the National Spelling Bee uh, yesterday at the National Harbor, and what really impressed me was these young leaders' composure. This was the first round, so they may have traveled all the way across the country. They misspell one word, they're done, but just how composed and professional they were. So now to announce uh, our closing remarks, a uh, man who won every Spelling Bee he participated in, our chapter president, Mr. Gene Edgers. And Matt obviously doesn't know how bad I spell. I am terrible. So here we are. Um, thank you all for being members of our chapter, joining us for this in-person and folks on the online there virtually for this member appreciation dinner. Yeah, we held it a little early, but uh, this was our, our swan song, our goodbye to Normandy Farms. So folks, if you can, make sure that they hear it. Let's give them a big round of applause for Mr. K and the staff. So we were honored to have Sylvia. There she is. <laughs> she put her head down. I was like, where'd she go? <laughs> you can't see me. Um, but uh, thank you, Sylvia, for a, a really great presentation. Uh, I'm sure everyone here enjoyed it. Uh, a lot of folks were, were participating. Uh, as Matt mentioned uh, before, this is our last meeting here at Normandy Farms. They are officially closing on the 26th of June. If uh, you can get here before they're closed, get here. I know Charlie and I are going to try to make one more Sunday buffet uh, and show up. If you haven't gone to their Sunday buffet, you don't know what you're missing. It is crazy. So come hungry. Um, the restaurant is gonna be open under new management, but that's gonna be next year. I've had several folks come up to me and say, well, what are they gonna open it as? I don't know. <laughs> um, the rumors abound, okay, honestly. Uh, so your guess is as good as mine, and I don't want to throw any or fan any uh, fire here by, by adding to the rumor mill and saying what I've heard, but I have heard things. So we'll see what they come up with. If it's something that we can make work, hey, we'll come back. In the meanwhile, uh, again, I'm, I'm kind of tacking on what Matt already said. He took a little of my thunder, but that's okay. He gets to go first. Um, we're going to stay. We're going to have off uh, August, excuse me, July and August like we have in the past. And we're going to use that time to try to find another venue. Uh, I had some folks come up to me, uh, thank you, and actually give me some uh, suggestions. And we're going to look into those. But if any of you come up with something or think of something, again, our high watermark is for look around you now. This is 160-ish people right here. But we've actually had up to 300 in here, OK? So they'll, they'll give us, that's one of the things about Normandy Farm. They literally would give us the entire restaurant. Okay, where are you going to get that? We'll find out. 
So that's the high water mark. But usually uh, we've been creeping up close to 100 people on our normal monthly meetings. So that's good. We're, we're kind of coming out of this pandemic, thank goodness, right? So that's really where we are in the 100 uh, range is our sweet spot for the monthly meetings, 300 for our member appreciation meetings. And if you got something, feel free to reach out and let us know. Our next meeting will be at the new venue, whatever that new venue is gonna be. And that's gonna be uh, September 7th, the first Wednesday of the month. Other than that, it's been great. Uh, please have a good evening. Please drive safely going home. And uh, thank you for being here and thank you for being members of our chapter. Take care.